Hey everybody, welcome to Subtracting Fractions and Mixed Numbers with Like Denominators. It pretty much operates the same as when we're adding fractions. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the denominators. The denominator is going to say the same. We're going to do the work at the top of our fractions. We're going to look at like terms. We're going to look at um, the whole numbers in the mixed number. And we're going to be combining those. We're going to look at the fractions and combining those. There is one glitch when we get down to the bottom that can be a little difficult for fourth grade. So that's going to be probably the part of the video, if you're going to watch this video a couple times, you're going to want to watch that the most. But let's start off with the easy stuff first. So just like we did when we add, our denominator is going to stay the same, and we just worked the top of the problem. We're just going to have to make sure that we are subtracting. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. We're going to do the same thing right here. 5 minus 2 is 3, and our 9 stays the same. And some of the kids will start getting good enough, and we can start asking them questions like, what fraction is this like, looking for equivalent fractions? And some of them might be able to tell me that it's the same thing as 1 third. Okay? Let's jump down to some of our mixed numbers here. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to combine like terms, things that are the same. So I'm going to look at my whole numbers first. 5 minus 4 is 1. And now I'm going to look at my fractions. 2 minus 1 is 1. And my denominator stays the same. So that's 1 and 1 third. Now over here, I don't have a whole number. So I just pretend there's an invisible 0 in front here. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 6 minus 4 as we look at the top of that fraction is 2, and our denominator stays the same, 1 and 2 ninths. Let's take a look at another mixed number problem. How about 10 and 5 6 minus 6 and 5 6? Well, let's look here. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 5 is 0. Denominator is the same, and in this case, what we're going to do here, we're just going to eliminate this. When we go to the store, I don't say here's four dollars and zero cents back. I just say here's your four dollars back. So that's what we're going to look look for there. Now this problem is going to get a little bit more tricky. On this problem, if I look and I do my combining of terms, four minus two is 2. Okay, that's easy enough. But then we have 4 minus 5. You can't do that. If I have $4 in my hand, you can't come up to me and say, give me $5. I don't have enough money to give you. Now I tell the kids, well, what did we do when we were first learning how to subtract? If we had a problem like, say like this, we couldn't do 4 minus 7. If you have $4, I can't ask you for 7. So what did we do? We borrowed. We regrouped. We're going to do that same strategy in this question. So this is one fraction, or one mixed number, that is, that I like to stack. So I stack these so I can look at similar groups. 4 and 4 fifths minus 2 and 5 fifths. And I tell the kids, Let's start thinking of these. Start thinking of this like your ones place and your tens place. So if this doesn't work here, we're going to borrow from that category next to it. We're going to borrow from our, one of our whole numbers. So just like in the olden days, we're going to cross off that 4. He becomes a 3. But here's where we have to stop. Because a lot of kids, what they want to do is just drop a 1 right next to it and make that a 14. And it doesn't work that way. Now we have to go back to our knowledge of what 1 is. And if I say 1 and I say turn 1 into a fraction, well, 1 could be 2 halves. 1 could be 3 thirds. 1 could be 4 fourths. 1 could be a million millionths, as long as your numerator and your denominator are the same. Now, we're going to use that knowledge here, and I tell them, here's your key. Look at that denominator. It's going to tell you what I want to make that 1. I want to make that 1 5 fifths. So the one that I'm taking over here, I'm giving it to this category. This is the same thing. 3 and 5 fifths is the same thing as 4. I'm just going to keep 3 here, and I'm going to take 1 and give it to this category. So now I need to 
add these together, combine it, and create a new fraction. And when I start getting all this stuff around it, I always like to do a rewrite to clean up my problem. So I'm going to do a rewrite over here. Now I have three whole numbers, 5 plus 4, because I'm going to add those top ones. That's going to be 9. My denominator stays the same. And now I'm going to bring this over. Now I've got a subtraction problem I can actually work because I can do 9 minus 5. That's going to be 4. Denominator stays the same. 3 minus 2 is 1. So the big thing in the borrowing here is borrowing, slashing that, going to a 3, and then deciding what kind of a fraction am I going to make my 1 that I'm giving to my fraction category. So let's try it out down here on this problem. I set you up with one more practice one so we can look at it again. So once again, I'm going to realize right away, 5 minus 2 is 3, but I can't do 2 minus 6. I can't, if I have $2, I can't say, okay, give me 6. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work that way. So I'm going to take this problem, and I'm going to stack it again. And let me grab a different color marker so it will stand out here. And let's see here. I can't do this, so I'm going to need to borrow from my whole numbers. Slash. That's going to become a 4. But now I need to give that one that I'm borrowing from here. I need to give it to this category, but I need to do it the correct way. Remember, we don't just drop a 1 next to that and make it a 12. That's not how this works. We need to turn that one that we're borrowing into a fraction and put the two fractions together. Here's your key. What do I want to turn that 1 into? I'm going to turn it into 8 eighths, because that way it's going to match up with the number I want to combine it with. So that becomes 8 eighths, and now I need to combine those. Once again, I like to clean this thing up so I have a cleaner working space. So this is going to be 4. 8 plus 2 is 10 with an 8 on the bottom, and this is 2 and 6 eighths, just rewriting that. Now I have a nice clean problem to work, 10 minus 6, 4, our denominator is going to stay the same, 4 minus 2 is 2, and in a problem like this, we might even get kids go, oh Mr. Lucas, that's actually the same thing as Two and a half. And if you can get that far, that's awesome. So subtracting, it's really not that bad until you have to do a little bit of regrouping. And then it's just following the steps and just remembering what you need to do and do repetitions with it. So like I said, go back in the video, look at the section that you like the most that you need to practice. I would guess it's probably regrouping. And give them a couple shots.